Hello and welcome to The Primary Storyline, a video series about post-production as it relates to Final Cut Pro 10 motion and compressor. Don't call it a comeback. Actually, that is completely accurate as it's been over a year since I have updated this podcast. I can assure you, though, it's only because I've been super busy using the program and I have quite a lot to share. My name is Andrew Gormley, and I will be your host. If you haven't noticed, Apple has come down from on high and presented us with a significant overhaul of Final Cut Pro X, both the application and the interface. While it's mostly familiar, I'd like to step through some of what's new and what you can expect covered in the coming weeks. The first thing you'll notice is that everything is darker and flatter, not unlike DaVinci Resolve or even Adobe Premiere. This really makes your clips and some of the color choices you'll see later pop. If we start near the top, uh, some of the tools have been moved from their previous locations. I'm talking about right here. So in order, we have our import window, our keyword manager, and our background tasks. The next part may take some getting used to, for me at least, because this is where a portion of our handy toolbar from previous versions has been relocated. You can now essentially switch between three different media browsers. So the first one right here is the one we all know and love. This contains all of our video and audio clips, projects, etc. You can quickly toggle this close to focus on your clips and really get a better view just like that. Next up, you can view your photo and audio libraries right here. As you can see, GarageBand appears here, and Logic would also appear in this area should you have that installed. <laughs> I'm not going to preview a Beatles song for you because I don't want to get sued, uh, but if you did have a license for, say, Across the Universe, and you wanted to use it in your project, it's as easy as clicking and dragging it and then dropping it into the event or keyword collection that you'd want to use. And finally, the last icon opens the built-in titles and generators, which used to be located down in our toolbar. If you were curious, transitions and effects still live mostly where they used to, down here in the right side. In the top right, going up from right here, we have a couple cool new buttons. This first one hides the browser entirely, so you can focus on your viewer. If we turn that back on, the second one hides the timeline completely so you can really focus on your clips and your viewer. The fourth one is one we already know, and that shows the inspector. The cool thing is, with the timeline hidden, the inspector is now full height. However, there is a really cool feature that I love, and I hope you do too. If we happen to have our timeline open and we still want the inspector to be full height, just double click in this area and make it so. While we are on the topic of customizing your workspace, here's where I'll mention that Apple has added the ability to create and save your own that you can recall at any time. And they've also built in three super useful ones. If you go up to Window and Workspaces, you will see them. You have your default one, which is what we're looking at right now. You have an organized one, which is essentially the timeline hidden here. And then you have something like Color and Effects. And if I click on that, you could see an incredibly practical color grading workspace. If we move down here, you will see that our connect, insert, and append edits are still intact, with overwrite being added as a button, although it was a feature just buried in the menus in a previous version. All of our tools still live right here, and you can access them as so. Our timeline history buttons, which are these arrows right here, now surround either the project or the clip that you're working on. These are super easy to miss and pretty essential to navigating around in the program. If I switch our workspace back to the default one, you'll now see that the Enhance and Retime menus are positioned here and here. We have our time code here and our audio meter toggle right here. Clip appearance icons that were historically in the bottom right corner of most of our windows are now located in the top right and are represented by this icon. So if you click here, you can change that. And the same is true up in the media browser over here. You may have noticed that audio clips in the timeline are now grouped and colored by their roles, which I believe officially makes this the video editing platform of choice for those with digital OCD like myself. No longer will sound effects overlap with music choices and ADR dialogue. Everything just stays in its own lane, but only if you want it to. Let me show you that along with something really cool, which is the brand new timeline index. In my experience, this feature wasn't utilized nearly enough 
by my contemporaries in previous versions of Final Cut Pro X. Now that Apple has supercharged this with things like audio lanes and focus, which if you click on roles, you have right here. So if you click on show audio lanes, bang, it separates everything out into its own lane. If, say, you just wanted to focus on your dialogue, you can click on this button and it shrinks everything else. This is a really great way to organize and obviously focus on what you want to work on at one time. And that about does it for the brand new interface changes in Final Cut Pro 10. Thank you for watching. Thank you for sticking around for a year while I was off editing and doing all sorts of other amazing work. If you found this useful, please give it a good rating on iTunes or subscribe on YouTube as it will help others find it or don't. This is a one-way street. You get the information regardless of whether you subscribe or not. If you have any questions or an idea of something you'd like to see covered, you can reach out via the website at theprimarystoryline.com. That's brand new. Or email theprimarystoryline at gmail.com. I check that every day and I will get back to you as quickly as I can. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you on the next episode of The Primary Storyline. <laughs>